Maybe hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friend Shane from HuntRunch.com and I have uh, our pal uh, EJ coming back to get his motor here a little bit later tonight and uh, I, I want to surprise him and, and go a little bit extra here for some concerns we had when was working with him and doing some training with him and one of the things he started to get pretty concerned about is whether uh, whether he really diagnosed his engine enough to determine if the uh, with if the crank seal was actually the problem, and so I was explaining to him like, hey, there's a way you can make a tool and you know test it before you take it apart and, and so on. But he had already bought the parts, and we wanted to do this, so we decided to rebuild it regardless. So I said, well, when I get done, I'll make up the adapters and then show you how you can do this. Now, what's cool about this? A lot of people say, oh, no big deal. I can uh, leak test a two-stroke motor. Well. If, if you don't really understand what this looks like or what you're really trying to accomplish, you're, you're not going to really get the full benefit of the test or you're going to have a hard time pinpointing where the, the problem actually is. So one of the easiest ways to look at this is to look at a cutaway engine so we can uh, explain what's actually going on here. So on a two-stroke engine versus a four-stroke engine. All right, let's take a look at this thing. So what we have on a two-stroke engine is we come through the intake with the air-fuel mixture charge. When the piston's up, it creates this vacuum underneath that draws it inside. Then uh, when the we fire that last cycle, when the piston goes down, it takes that charge that's under there, goes through some transfer ports around the cylinder to get it back to the top of the piston. We're repeating the cycle every 360 degrees. So we can't have air leaking into the motor because it'll dilute the air fuel mixture from the carburetor and it'll dilute the oil mix, or we could suck transmission fluid in through this right crank. So there's a few different things going on. I'm gonna cover that in a little bit more detail here in a second. But when we rebuild a two stroke or we wanna diagnose a two stroke, what we need to try and figure out is can this crank case be sealed from atmospheric pressure, okay? So we can pressurize it and we can pull a vacuum on it uh, to do that test. Now you can buy a, you know, a, a professional tool might cost you 300 bucks, or I'm gonna show you how you can make it yourself. Uh, I bought about $20 worth of, you know, scrap and, a, and stuff to make the adapters, and then you'd need a Mighty Vac or vacuum gauge. I've got videos on those. You can pick those up for 20 some bucks now. So pretty uh, fun project if you just plain like making tools as well, and you maybe don't have a million motors to do. So let me, let me show you that in a second, but I wanna talk about what, you know, what's so important about this test. You're going to see how I set this test up was so that I could actually test the right crank seal. And there's no way that you can do that when you have all these covers on because this is venting to the atmosphere. And if the seal is leaking, you have no way to know if it's the seal or the case on this side. So it's how I'm going to do it is way cool. Wait, see what I'm going to do to EJ's motor. It's pretty cool. But... The, the point is, is the areas that we could leak is the seal around the crankshaft, whether it's a gasket or sealant, we could have an intake leak, we could have a base gasket leak, we could have a head gasket leak, and we could leak on the spark plug sealing surface, and then I mentioned uh, left and right crank seals. So we, we want to pull those covers off so that we can get to those seals to see them when we're trying to, you know, diagnose. And on the assembly, on the way back together, you'll see how I do it before I go ahead and put all this back on, just in case I messed up. So the point I want to get at is why a lot of people don't do this is they're just trusting all the new parts. And the other thing is it's a fair amount of work to try to block off a motor that has a power valve system, as you're going to see here in a second. So I think that's why a lot of mechanics aren't doing it is because it, it can be a little bit labor intensive. But I think it's a good learning lesson. So let's get back to uh, EJ's motor here and I'll show you how I go about doing this. All right, so what we what we have here is we have the, the crankshaft seal exposed so that what we want to do is we're going to spray soapy water around it and we're going to be able to see uh, if we get air bubbles out of it, okay? And we're going to do the same thing around the crankcase seam uh, on, the, on the engine side here. We can go around here. We can go underneath. You can see here I have the exhaust plugged, and this is being a little bit difficult. It's creating a little tiny leak. Um, I think I dang near got it sealed now. I just used a paper towel and used some electrical tape. I couldn't find one large enough locally uh, to fit this, so I was trying to be creative. But these are just an expansion plug you can get. I picked mine up at O'Reilly's. It was this Dorman brand. Um, easy to get. I, I thought about going to Home Depot and looking for like a water pipe or something due to the size of this. But um, 
the other thing that we have is you need your spark plug good and, and torqued and tight. And you can see here, I made this bracket, uh, or excuse me, this block off plate, and I just used the old gasket um, to block off the, the cavity that has the power valve. So that's how I've got these gaskets on and in place. And that is how I'm gonna be able to actually um, pressure test this because I'm blocking off what would just pour that out. Now, if I had this cover on and I had that hooked up, there's no way that I could know if this crank seal is good. Now I could plug this vent and if the whole engine held pressure, then great. I'd know that it was good. But let's say that I'm trying to diagnose one and I got a leak and I can't find that leak. It's really nice to be able to see this seal and then like I said, get in here with some soapy water and, and literally watch it bubble. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pump this up now. It takes a bit from an empty uh, crankcase here. And uh, the aftermarket ones are a little bit faster. Let me put the phone down and crank this up. Okay, what I want to show you here is we got some pressure on there. We got a extremely, extremely small leak. And I told you I was having a hard time of uh, sealing that up. And it, it seems like it's getting better and better. But this is the point right here where what you want to do, once there's pressure in here, if that seal's leaking, doesn't matter if we have a tiny little leak, wherever the leak is, it's going to bubble. So we're going to look around there and see if we see any bubbles. We're going to do this, even the spark plug sealing surface, see if we get any bubbles. Thought I saw one for a second. We're going to do the intake gasket. We're going to do the tool itself, make sure the tool's not leaking. The base gasket, like we talked about, we'll do the front uh, just, just for you, just showing for the video. You need to do the whole thing. You need to lay the motor over and check all the way around. And then uh, the ignition seal gasket uh, as well. I'm trying to do this one-handed so I don't have a lot of editing. Okay. And then looking for any bubbles. If I had anything, that would be my, my problem here. So if we look around, let's see how that exhaust is doing now. I really cranked down on that, but I think I was getting a really small leak out of there. But the one place I did find a leak was in this three bolt cover where it's hard to seal up. And I saw a little bubbles there. Let's see where we're sitting now. Now we're down to five pump that back up here can I see once I get some pressure in there it's not so bad you're gonna get a workout that's for sure okay all right and when I get that up and, and the next question you may have is like well how much should I put in there like what's what's a spec and I, I have a hard time answering it because I don't see specs and manuals for this but I know what the uh one of the aftermarket tools that you can buy, they tell you to put no more than 10 PSI and kind of a rule of thumb over the years has been uh, eight PSI and and pull the, the opposite on the vacuum, just pull a few inches of vacuum on it. So we're not sitting there and like putting shot pressure into it. We're just trying to see if we have a leak. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an intentional leak and show you like what it would look like. So since I think I'm gonna be redoing this, I'm gonna try and just crack this loose and see what happens. Yeah, and I saw a big bubble right away and we saw all our pressure dump right off. There you go. So like if I had a leak anywhere, you could see the soapy water would show itself bubbling. Now that would be an awesome tool if it was down on a crankshaft, wouldn't it? So pretty stinking cool. Uh, let me just pop a couple of these things off so that you can see a little bit more uh, like what I'm talking about on why we had to plug these with these kind of goofy little uh, brackets and stuff I made. So hold on one second. All right. See my goofy kind of setup here. Just like I said, just trying to get something in there to see if I could get a really good seal. Now, normally, especially if you buy the, the professional kits, you're going to have a whole selection of sizes to get in there. And once again, you notice like when I had the leak, it was really obvious. If you have a bad crank seal or a, a seal or anything, you only need a, a little bit of PSI in there 
and it's going to bubble that soapy water right away. So like I said, this is a great test. Now, if you had all perfect adapters and whatnot, what you'd see in the kits is they would say to leave it sit on there and not lose like, a, uh, I think a pound an hour was like an average. So they want to see if you put eight in it, you want to be able to come back in an hour and see that you have no less than seven. So um, there's a little spec for you. Let's go ahead and look and see what's going on in here. Uh, this one took me a little while to figure out what I was going to do. And now I'm just going to save this stuff as a KX250 kit. And I'll show you what I did that made it really stinking cool. I just reused the old gasket. Okay. And what I did is I took a thick enough piece here where I could fit that. Uh, this is for the power valve. And I wanted to be able to fit that inside of here, clamp it down. It gave me a good sealing surface, and that sealed this off. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, what I did is just took a piece of paper, and if you're working with dirty hands, it's pretty cool. You can just rub along a surface and hold that tight against it, and those sharp edges will show up just crystal clear, pop my holes, and uh, then I went and transferred that to this. I ended up sanding it off. Uh, to get a nice real smooth surface for the uh, the gasket once I was done. But yeah, worked out pretty well. Just had a hollow hole in there. Uh, like I said, uh, had to get creative to not want to take any of that apart. I wanted to have the fastest way possible to test it. And then uh, let's look at what what other tools we have here. So if you're a fan of the channel, you have seen me use my Mighty Vac a million different times. Uh, a lot of people know this as a tool for bleed and breaks. And I've created a lot of cool ideas in, in curriculum around how to use this on carburetors. So it's really completely outside the box. You don't see uh, anybody doing that. But uh, we've had uh, you know over a million views now on those videos and uh, quite a bit of feedback as, as people love this uh, this test with this. Um, in all honesty, I've seen tests from the small engine industry that led me to think, why aren't we doing this in motorcycle and power sports? So Mighty Vac, got Amazon links on those. They're really inexpensive and this is tool. Now the nicer one here, this one I can flick here to vacuum. So I could go ahead, like I said, I've already done it and pulled a vacuum and that'll take the seal and test it the other way. So you can pressurize to hold pressure against the crank seals, gaskets, everything, and then pulling a vacuum on it, you're forcing that seal to be able to prove its integrity uh, on a vacuum as well, which is what happens when the piston goes up, it creates a big vacuum underneath it. So those seals have got to be able to do their job. And this is how we prove it. This is how we can hand a customer a motor and say, it's good to go, or you go, get ready to put in your motorcycle and you're going to know that it's ready and good to go and not have any problems. So if he continues to have this spark plug following, EJ is going to be able to really know now hey, I got to chase a fuel issue or an ignition issue. There's something else going on that would be creating that, that burn not happening all the way. So let's look at the uh, adapter I made for the uh, intake. It's pretty simple and straightforward. I just took a piece of plate and matched it up to the uh, intake gasket. I reused the old one and then I put a tire valve stem seal in it to be able to attach to. So same thing, I'll just keep all this as a KX250 kit and I could do these pretty dang fast. You want to definitely make sure and use short enough bolts that you don't um, thread into something and break off an ear or something, especially on this backside. So there's a little tip for you. But once again, just took the old gasket, made a pattern, made a template out of that, no big deal, and took a uh, valve core tool, or excuse me, a valve core stem out of a tire and uh, made that as a way to hook up. So if you, if you use a valve stem, you want to make sure and take its core out so that you can see um, through it. Uh, we don't want to hold the air 
in the, we don't want to hold the air in there because then that's going to give us a false indication that we, that we don't have a leak, right? Uh, because what's going to happen is it's going to hold right to the point uh, on our gauge. So that just be like it'd be like sitting here and going like this with that valve stem. We're not going to see the leak. We just go right to. Oops, I'm on vacuum. We'd go right here. If I left that valve core in there, it, it's not going to show that I'm leaking through on the other side. It's going to stop right to that point and uh, do me absolutely no good. So make sure that you have a hollow hole for whatever you use. It's just convenient to use these. It isn't that it has to be that. It could be a, a nipple of a fuel line or plumbing, you know, plumbing fitting or you name it. So. All right, my friends, there it is. Uh, I thought you'd enjoy kind of seeing like how you can actually test your work and the integrity of it, you know, right on the bench. So I've got to keep uh, getting this thing back together here. I got a lot of parts yet to put in there and uh, I'm gonna keep rock and rolling. But if you haven't done so yet, make sure and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, as always, we appreciate all the members that have joined the channel, bought their merch. Uh, make it a great day, my friends. I'm gonna keep wrenching.